This tutorial is all about fuel cells and how they can be used as efficient sources of energy. You need to be able to construct the balance symbol equation for the burning of hydrogen in oxygen, understand this is an exothermic reaction, and be able to write both the balanced symbol equations for the changes at each electrode in a fuel cell, but also the balanced equation for the overall reaction in the fuel cell. So the fuel cell uses hydrogen and oxygen and provides energy in the form of electrical power. It can be used in many places including spacecraft and nowadays in motor cars. The hydrogen oxygen fuel cell involves the reaction between two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen to make two molecules of water. Now, we start off with two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen. But the reaction involves breaking and making bonds. First of all, we must break the existing bonds between the hydrogen atoms and between the oxygen atoms. That requires 1370 kilojoules of energy. Following that, new bonds are made between the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms to make water. This releases 1464 kilojoules of energy. When we compare those two values, we find that overall there is a release of energy. The release of energy overall is delta H, and 94 kilojoules of energy are released per mole of hydrogen and oxygen. That can be represented in this energy level diagram. The energy trapped in the bonds of the hydrogen and oxygen is greater than the energy trapped in the water molecules bonds and therefore during the reaction 94 kilojoules of energy are released. The reaction is overall exothermic. Now that energy can be released either by combustion by burning the hydrogen in oxygen but it can be released more efficiently, not as heat energy, but as electrical energy, in a fuel cell. Here's a diagram of the fuel cell. You can see that there are two electrodes. Here a cathode, here an anode, which are made of platinum. Fuel, in the form of hydrogen, comes in at one electrode, and in the form of oxygen, or air, comes in at the other. The hydrogen gas H2 here shown happening at the anode converts into four hydrogen ions releasing four electrons. The electrons form a current which passes from the anode to the cathode lighting a bulb for example. The hydrogen ions move through the electrolyte, which is made of acid and therefore already contains hydrogen ions. At the other electrode, called the cathode, these four hydrogen ions combine with an oxygen molecule from the air or from the oxygen, and the four electrons which have passed through the circuit to form two water molecules. Now you might ask why is it that the anode is negatively charged and the cathode is positively charged? This goes against all that we've learnt in electrolysis. Well this isn't electrolysis. The anode here is negatively charged because that's where the electrons are being produced and they're flowing from the negative to the positive. The cathode is positive because that's where electrons are being used up. So why is it called the cathode? It's called the cathode because cations are discharged there. That's the real reason why the cathode is called the cathode. These positive ions are called cations, negative ions are called anions. And these positive ions, because they're discharged at this electrode, that's why it's called the cathode. 
If we add the two equations together and cancel out whatever appears on both sides, we end up with an overall reaction, which is that two hydrogen molecules combine with one oxygen molecule to make two water molecules. The fuel cell, therefore, is very efficient because it doesn't produce any heat, it has no moving parts, and it produces no greenhouse gases. Fuel cells are ideal for using in spacecraft such as the International Space Station. Here they use what's called regenerative fuel cell. This means that when electricity is provided to the cell in the form of solar electricity from solar panels during the day, the electricity can be used to split up water in the cell into hydrogen and oxygen by electrolysis. At other times, when more electricity is needed, the hydrogen and oxygen can be recombined within the fuel cell to make water and electrical energy. The advantage of such a fuel cell is it can provide water from hydrogen and oxygen which then can be used by the astronauts. Of course that water is re-harvested and finds its way back into the fuel cell. It's also lightweight, compact, has no moving parts and doesn't require a flame which means it's much safer to use in these conditions. Fuel cells are a very efficient way of reacting hydrogen and oxygen together far more efficient than burning the hydrogen in oxygen to make heat energy. The car industry has long looked at using hydrogen as a fuel. It can either be burned in a fairly standard internal combustion engine, but now research is being made into combining the hydrogen with oxygen from the air in a fuel cell to make electrical energy to power the car. So where would all this hydrogen come from? Well, there's no shortage of water in the world and the water can be converted into hydrogen and oxygen by using electrolysis. Where, you might ask, does the energy for that come from? Well, of course, it could come from the burning of fossil fuels. But in an ideal world, that energy would come from a renewable source such as solar or wind power. The advantage of fuel cells in cars is that unlike petrol engines they produce no carbon dioxide emissions or carbon monoxide or nitrogen oxide come to that. The hydrogen can be provided from a fuel station. It's stored as a compressed liquid in a very strong tank in the car and it provides a performance comparable with petrol. The advantage of this over a battery powered car is of course that you can fill it up again and again and therefore there isn't any issue with the amount of miles you can do on one charge. The fuel cell is also small and light compared with a battery. Fuel cells have many advantages over conventional ways of making electricity such as using power stations by using engines and so on, mainly because they're much more efficient. They work at about 70% efficiency, whereas gas-fired power stations and uh, other kinds of power stations are a maximum of 50% efficient, so less energy is wasted. There's much for your stages. For example, when burning gas in a power station, they burn the gas, that then heats water in a boiler, turns into steam, steam travels along pipes, pipes uh, lead to the turbine, turbine spins, generator produces electricity. In each of these stages there's the opportunity to lose energy, the form of heat or noise or whatever. It's a more direct energy transfer and of course it produces much less pollution. Fuel cells run on hydrogen generally and therefore only make water as a waste product and that of course is non-pollutant. Although hydrogen oxygen fuel cells are very fuel efficient that doesn't mean that they don't produce any pollution. 
One issue to consider is, where does the hydrogen come from? Well, it comes from the electrolysis of water, but that requires electrical energy to perform. If that electrical energy has come from a power station, a conventional power station, then of course pollution has been produced in the making of that electricity. Fuel cells running on hydrogen can only be thought of as completely green or pollution free if the energy has been produced in a pollution free manner. In other words, for example, from wind energy, solar energy, wave energy, or one of these other green methods. The second issue with these cells is the catalysts which are used within them. These contain what are called heavy metals and these are poisonous, they degrade over time and need to be disposed of very carefully otherwise they'll produce pollution of their own.